The metabolic process of respiration, which is the release of energy from food, comes in two distinct flavors, anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is that breakdown of food that does not require oxygen. And in fact, the name anaerobic refers to that. An means without, aero means air. And what's important in air? Oxygen gas. So this process has got a few advantages over aerobic respiration. One, you don't need oxygen. Two, it's very fast. Unfortunately, that speed, that simplicity comes at a cost. It comes at the cost that it only produces a net gain or profit of 2 ATP per glucose molecule. Let's take a look at this diagram here and see how that works out. Here we see glucose coming into the cell, but unfortunately, in the beginning stage of glycolysis, you actually have to spend energy from the cell. Why do that? Well, glucose is a six carbon molecule. By putting a pair of phosphates on either end of that six carbon molecule, it makes it unstable and easier to break. Additionally, by putting those phosphates on either end, it makes it negatively charged so it can no longer go out through the glucose channels that the glucose entered through the cell. Now, ultimately, you wind up converting four of your adenosine diphosphate into four ATPs. So that gives you four. You already spent two. That's a profit or net gain of two ATP. Now, the other molecule that is produced during glycolysis is a molecule called NADH. Where did that come from? There's a special kind of molecule called NAD positive. NAD positive is what's known as an electron carrier. It's a molecule that can absorb high energy electrons and carry them to someplace else. Now, for aerobic creatures, that NADH is a great molecule because you can use the energy of the high energy electrons in your mitochondria to generate a ton of ATP. But for anaerobic creatures, that NADH is, in, in fact, it's a waste. It's pointless. Let's take a look why. If we take a look for them, that NADH is useless. It can't be used for anything. And in fact, it means that you no longer have the NAD positive to continue doing glycolysis. That's why anaerobic creatures came up with a system called fermentation. Fermentation doesn't generate any energy. Only glycolysis does in anaerobic respiration. But the fermentation allows you to recycle the NAD positive to NADH. It has another side benefit, because that pyruvate acid that's produced at the end of glycolysis, that's actually pretty toxic for the cell. Now, there's two versions of fermentation. There's ethyl alcohol fermentation and lactate fermentation. Now, let's take a look at the one that produces lactate, because that's the one that your cells do if you ever need to um, get a lot of energy very, very quickly. Say, for example, you're being chased by a tiger and you have to sprint. You only have enough energy reserves sitting in your muscle cells for, say, 10 to 15 seconds worth of operation at max speed. But you can't stop after 15 seconds and say, please, Mr. Tiger, time out, because there's no time Z's in tiger hunts. So instead, your muscles will switch to lactic acid fermentation in order to generate at least some ATP so you can keep going. If you've ever done a heavy workout, you know this causes problems because while that lactate acid or lactate is less uh, toxic than pyruvate, it does have some problems. Your muscles start to feel sore and they start becoming less and less efficient. So let's see what's happening. So we do glycolysis and we produce the pyruvate. But then with the NADH, we dump the high energy electrons that are on NADH back onto the pyruvate. It undergoes a few changes and becomes a different three carbon molecule called lactate. That gives us our NAD positive so that we can at least continue doing glycolysis. It's a way of recycling, as you can see here, the NADH back into NAD positive. There are some cells, like yeast, that will do a different form of fermentation called alcoholic fermentation. Now what they do is instead of converting the pyruvate into a lactate, they convert the pyruvate into ethyl alcohol, a two carbon molecule, and carbon dioxide, a gas. And this is basically how people make booze. You just take a bunch of food, you mix it together with some bacteria or yeast, close it off in a barrel or in a bottle so that no oxygen gets in, and they'll happily turn to anaerobic respiration and alcoholic fermentation. They'll go nom nom nom, eat all the glucose, and pee out a bunch of alcohol. The carbon dioxide forms the bubbles that you may have noticed before in alcohol that your parents are drinking. So that's it. That's anaerobic respiration. Begins with glycolysis and ends with fermentation.